we may very well be at the brink of breakout for Hellbiz stock. There are a couple things that need to play out in order for us to transpire a move to the upside like that. Let's validate within this video. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with a HLBZ statistical uh, technicals and raw price action thread of analysis. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community and Discord called RCAB. With that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So we are looking at HLBZ on the daily chart. And here you can see that we've actually been riding this uh, massive descending channel since about September 2021. You can actually see the dates right down here. And uh, it looks like we are potentially going to make that breakout. Um, now, the reason why I can say this is because we need... Uh, the golden rule of three to be met, just like we always talk about in this channel. So usually the golden rule of three consists of three t uh, tests of the resistance before a capitulation event or a type of uh, accumulation event before a true attempt to break out on test number four. Now, if we're talking about the channel itself, we have on the green numbers, we have uh, test number one, test number two, uh, this would be test number three, and test number four would essentially be this one right over here. Now, we are also building a uh, falling wedge. Usually falling wedges are bullish. Uh, they, are, they are bullish formations. So, and now particularly to the falling wedge, we're looking at tests. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I mean by this. Uh, so we are looking at test number one and two right back to back to each other, right? So now we have test number three falling right at this uh, wick here. And test number four would essentially be this one right over here. Now, usually test number four is what confirms the breakout. Now, it, uh, so that we can get a closer look, we need to actually dive into a smaller time frame right in this area so that we can see what's happening with price action right in here and uh, some technicals as well. Let's go ahead and get right into that chart. So you, yes, so now in the four hour chart, this is that, uh, this is this smaller area here. So now you, you are looking at another falling wedge and you're looking at another reversal uh, triangle here. So this is uh, an ascending triangle or some people call it a right angle triangle. Um, <clears throat> now both of them are bullish and there are a few lines in here that I wanna be able to just uh, kind of get through first. Um, we are looking at a decline in sell volume. So you can see that the sell pressure is actually declining while the buy pressure is actually in an ascent. So this is actually a very good thing and it is indicating that we are potentially getting ready for a breakout of test number four and test number four. So now here as well, you can see that we have test number one. This is number two. We have a test number three, and we've already made a breakout of number four from the larger triangle here. Um, the reason that I think that we may actually face some immediate short-term downside is for the fact that these breakouts, when they happen on uh, you know on test number four, they usually require a pullback in order for us to come back and validate the newly converted what was resistance and now support. So we haven't retraced to this triangle for that uh, for that you know for that breakout confirmation and then validation of the support before a continuation to the upside. Um, uh, and you can also see here that this candle uh, we would need we would actually need to close a four hour minimum candle since we're on the four hour chart here above this resistance line. Uh, in order for us to confirm a breakout and then we would actually come back down possibly wick down here just so we can test both of the uh, newly converted resistances into support before a continuation onto the upside now another thing that I wanted to do was that I wanted to see that we were meeting geometrical patterns or we or we were in a sense trading mathematically and uh, the way I did that was the way I did that was actually using the shapes that we have here and also a Fibonacci sequence. So this is a Fibonacci retracement tool. And I actually uh, took uh, took th this. Uh, so I'm going to show you exactly where I'm taking it from. So uh, you're looking at what date is it? It's right over. It's right over here. 
in this I'm sorry in this candle here I'm sorry when I when I'm sometimes sometimes I make that little bit of a mistake because I I actually don't like to have the Fibonacci within this here because it creates a clutter it creates a mess right so I use my cursor uh, horizontal line when uh, when I'm looking at where I placed it so I'll be looking you know I'll be looking at the Fibonacci on the right hand side while looking over here right so we're taking the Fibonacci retracement from this uh, this was in, in uh, November 7th, and then we actually took the lowest point of the Fibonacci on, let's see, that was uh, November 22nd at that low. So it could very well be a swing high, swing low type of, uh, type of thing in order for us to gauge the direction for the upside in the following days. So I'm not doing it from this area here. I wanted to see how it moved historically in the last few days. So we can see that it is following a geometrical pattern and it, it this candle actually reached right to the one spot 618, which is a very important ratio. This is usually where trade likes to take it. The, the sentiment within the stock market usually or within anything, really, uh, we actually like to take the trade to the to the 618 ratios, including the in the inverse, not 618, the 2618, 3 and 4618. OK, so that's a very important ratio for us to keep in mind. Um, so. In this test, we also would need a continuation to the upside and also a retracement in order for us to continue on to testing our newly converted resistance into support, which could be in confluence with this as well. We still need some more upside. We need to clear this resistance with a four hour candle and we'll trace back to test all of the resistances, new, all of the newly converted resistances into support all in one shot since they're all so near each other. Okay, so now let's move on to the next chart. This is going to be the statistical side of the analysis. Uh, hang on just a sec, you guys. Okay, so we, um, uh, apologies. So we are actually looking at, uh, for the new viewers, if you haven't actually seen me do this before, this is actually volatility you're looking at, represented by this indicator BBWP. Um, volatility is direction neutral. In order for us to be able to gain a bias for direction uh, in the asset, we actually pair it with an indicator similar to this one. I tend to use stochastic momentum, or you can use really any momentum oscillator. So uh, now what I have noticed is that I've backtested the stochastic momentum indicator in several, several, several tickers. And uh, I get a general read of between 79 to 90% accuracy in guessing the asset's direction. Now, when paired with volatility, I find an edge. So this is this is usually how I trade. So um, I have taken, I've, I've performed the back test. So ever, ever, let's see, from, from the beginning of the trading of the HLBZ asset, which could have been uh, August uh, 2021. So the criteria for that uh, back test, which is done by hand, it's uh, it's actually this. So anytime that we have contracted down to a critical level, which I consider to be anything below uh, the 15 percentile, which is uh, which is the 15 percentile is actually located here at this green uh, neon green line, anything below it. And uh, we've started a contraction phase. I've actually taken note of that iteration's uh, uh, duration, the downside thrust, uh, and the amount of times that the iterations were guessed correctly to the downside versus the upside. And those uh, upside versus downside guesses were are, are correct and incorrect based on these uh, vertical lines. Okay, so now the back test did come in with some interesting figures for us to look at let's go ahead and evaluate those uh now let me go ahead and just uh find my notes where do they go there you go okay so let's uh open up our profile once more and now take a look at this okay so i i'm saying downside because we still need to confirm the uh the uh or, or validate the newly converted resistances into support and I did notice that whenever we we, we reached uh, contractive levels below the 15 percentile, that the expansion move from these critical lows has led to a move to the downside more often than the upside. So now out of a total 16 iterations throughout the entire trading history of HLBZ, 10 were correctly guessed to the downside. Now that gives us an average downside accuracy of 62 spot 5% with an average downside pressure percentage of 31.45%. Uh, it would be a minus 31.45% over the span of just over 11 days. 
And uh, this is the proof of work here. So now if we, I mean, we can, we can actually, uh, let's look at the metrics now. Since I gave you a metric of about 75 to 90% accuracy in stochastic momentum, you can see that it's now suggesting a potential downside continuation. And if you look close enough, the RSI, I'm sorry, the RSI, it's very similar to an RSI actually. So uh, <clears throat> the moving average versus the signal line are actually about to cross each other, which is a bearish uh, sign for a continuation to the downside. We are looking at an eight hour chart here. So this downside could actually be realized either late session Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. So, I mean, it does have to play out. We're looking at one candle per I'm sorry, maybe two candles per per uh, per day. So, for example, for example here, actually, could it be three? Oh, yeah. So we have uh, 1122. I'm sorry, uh, 1125. We have 1123 as two candles, 1122 as two candles, 1121 as two candles. Yeah, so two candles for an entire day of trading. So this is likely to take uh, some time. Okay, so now if we were to apply that uh, metric to the downside right now uh, from the from our current position, a minus 31.45% uh, decline. Let's see. Okay, 31.45%. That's close enough. It looks like it's taking us to what could be yeah, there's no trading history at these lower levels, but it is taking us right back to where we could be looking at this support once more. Um, if we do, if we if we do get that, we could be touching into a pretty important demand zone here. <clears throat> so now we can actually take a, also a fib, and uh, we'll take it from the pre market low to the day to the day's high. So the, to the swing high, right? So, so let's do this like this. And it's going to be inversely taken. Okay. All right. So the suggestion for the uh, price objective, the statistical price objective is 16 cents. And the suggestion for the one spot 618 is landing right at about 14 cents. So it is it is pretty close. Um, we would need both of these we would actually, we definitely would need both of these, uh, the signal line and the moving average to be pivoted towards the downside and also our, uh, the, the momentum uh, component, I'm sorry, the, the volatility component of the, of the uh, BBWP and the moving average both continuing with a pivot to the upside. So this can actually guarantee the, the downside move. So statistics are actually suggesting a downside as well for, for the medium term time frame, uh, which is very much in accordance of what we're talking about, potentially uh, uh, some, some upside before a retracement. And uh, also, also here, continuing a little bit to the upside so we can clear a four hour candle above this resistance here. And then following up with a, with a candle to the downside so that we can so that we can uh you know just move on forward so if we're looking at the levels of this uh of this resist i'm sorry the newly converted resistance and support you're looking that you're looking at just, let's just say that one two three we'll do this let's, let's just say on like tuesday okay so this is suggesting about 18 cents and we're looking at 16 cents uh from the one spot 618 well sorry 14 cents and then the, our statistical metric is 1628 so we're looking at we're looking at a cent away from 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 the uh, resistance uh, conversion into support tests. So the the statistics are are suggesting something very relevant. Okay, so know that there are statistics. They are not actually uh, certainties, okay? I'm not a financial advisor. Please take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as a form of entertainment. I actually can't suggest for you to buy or sell any assets. Do your own DD and we'll be okay. All right, so let's move on to the last part of this uh, analysis. So here we're going to be looking at, let's do a single pane first and move on to the 12-hour chart. So I've actually put this here for your convenience as well so that you can be able to see what I am talking about as I am moving along. Um, in this instance, we are looking at a confirmed two drives of bullish divergence and these uh actually one drive of bullish divergence and one drive of phantom bullish divergence i know the phantom is, isn't in here but it's only phantom because we're actually going through price action like this and we have since confirmed those bullish divergences are and are currently in play now if look at the 12 hour 
uh, signal line, which is represented by the purple indicate by the pur- by, by the purple moving component, and the pink line is the moving average. So if you can actually look, we have a clean suggestion to the upside. Now, if we do continue on to the upside, and we don't clear the high of this of this candle here. This candle and this candle, we would essentially confirm three, uh, let's see, one, wow, a one drive of hidden bearish divergence and two drives of phantom hidden bearish divergence. So, I, I mean, <laughs> this it, it looks like it's almost actually going to do that. So I'm, I'm talking about an increase to the upside to about, let's just say we go to this resistance here and we stop at 32 cents and then face a downside so then we could so that we can you know start confirming our our uh, resistance support conversions and uh, then we could see an upside move so the upon the closure which could be the next session of this 12 hour candle that which is going to be the, the next one I mean, if this one closes, if this one closes in this manner and closes, like I said, below the highs of 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 these le- of these levels here, meaning anything anything below this cursor line here, if this candle closes below it, we that's we have a confirmation of some bearish divergence um, in in three in in two different ways. Okay, so now let's open up a multi pane and see what is happening with uh, a few time frames all at once. Um, let's, uh, we're going to start with a 30 minute immediate short term. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's just pull this up. Uh, another thing that I wanted to actually uh, pull up here is the RSI properties for my, for my RSI. I've actually, uh, made a diagram here for you to be able to follow along as I talk, as I talk, you know, about the, uh, current position of the RSI one, two, three, four total zones, one, two, three, four. So you can be able to follow. Okay. So the 30 minute time frame is suggesting, let's look at it closer. It is suggesting a continuation onto the upside. It has broken into bull strength percentile, but when we are in these uh, shallow areas of the bull strength percentile, we can actually see a gravitational pull right into uh, bull weakness percentile. Okay, so I wouldn't give this too much credit in here, but it's doing good. Now, uh, the buy hourly is th- the pivot is actually slowing down just a little bit it's not so aggressive uh, to the upside and it is well I'm, I'm sorry not well within it is in the bull strength percentile but again it's in the shallow areas of it which means we could more than likely be uh, gravitated towards the bull weakness percentile unless some type of FOMO event happens of course um, now the six hour RSI is suggesting downside and it has since failed the bull strength percentile if it does continue to the upside, it would be okay because we are in the deep areas of the bull weakness percentile, which means we can be gravitated into bull strength. Okay, so now the daily RSI is suggesting a continuation to the upside and it has rejected the bear strength percentile. We're in bear weakness right now in the shallow areas of bear weakness, which means we're we're likely to get into uh, to, to, to jump into the bull weakness percentile. So if we take the consideration from our RSI, which is potentially uh, sh- immediate shorter term upside to uh, potential downside in the medium term, let's just look at the eight hour. The eight hour is suggesting upside, and let's look at the four hour. The four hour is also suggesting upside. Okay, so yeah, we, we, we could be looking at a continuation onto the upside for sure. So this... I could see us may potentially touching again at the one spot six one eight. I mean, we can also wick wick uh, above this to the uh, thirty dollars. I'm sorry, thirty dollars to the thirty cent level thirty forty six before facing a retracement. And this can likely happen, and the upside can likely happen in the next day or two. It does sound like a bear, it does sound like a bearish. Uh, uh, um, outlook but it really isn't the thing is is that i'm just expecting a pullback after some more upside so this is absolute this rsi 
and 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 raw price action technicals are suggesting a continuation up to the upside and i think that's likely for us to clear the fourth attempt of true breakout before a, a retracement and confirm our newly converted resistance into support so that is what i am looking at for hlbz you guys um if you have any questions or concerns please don't hesitate to reach out to me on discord or twitter i'll make sure to leave the links in the description below for you to consider joining the trading community in discord called rcab but with that said, I wish you a good rest of your weekend, and I will catch you at the bell on Monday. Adios.